Hey, thanks for joining me today. It's been a while. I've been traveling a lot. I apologize for not getting videos out in kind of a timely fashion, but I'm back now and I've got a really nice one for you today. Uh, it's all about um, libraries inside Adobe Illustrator, actually all Adobe products. Um, the asset library, it's, it's made for commonly used elements. So things that you're going to use over and over again, or things that might change over time. And I'll show you what that'll look like in a moment. So let's just jump right in and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so here we have a document and you can see I already have my library's palette open on the side here. And um, one of the things that you can see is I can group these. So if I, if I knock all of these down, I, I have, these are just groups that I've created for myself, graphic elements, special colors, HP logos, type, and within graphic elements, right? I have a few items here. Uh, HP logos, this is kind of cool. I can even go so far as to do subfolders. Uh, so I can really group these things uh, as, as finely as I want. But let's go through this list and, and we'll kind of show you what's going on here. Um, so there are elements that I might use in a fairly, uh, on a fairly common basis. So one of them in a previous job that I used to work at was creating scale drawings. And so there were two specific scales that I always used to work in. One was one inch equals 20 inches. And then one is one inch equals one foot. Um, so I have both of these scale bars on here. Had I, had I been working on a scale drawing here, let's create a fine drawing right here. Ooh, look at that. Um, there's my scale drawing, but I always want to put that scale bar in there to let people know exactly what they're looking at. And so rather than draw this every time or copy it from an, an, uh, an existing file or anything like that. I can actually go in here and in my libraries palette, watch this. All I have to do is I'm going to select in this case, one inch equals one foot, and I'm just going to drag it right in and then click and look at that. There's my, wow, much bigger, uh, one inch equals one foot, of course, because I made it a foot long. Um, so one inch equals one foot. Okay. Uh, I can do the same thing over here. I can drag this one in. That's a little bit better. Let me move this into position and then we can kind of see, right, what's going on there. So there's my, oh, one inch equals 20 feet. Oh yeah, that was for buildings and things like that. Um, but watch, if I click on this, you see right now, it just shows up here in the very corner that this is a linked file. Okay, this is just something that's that's being added in here as a link, All right? And that means a couple of things to us. One of the things that it means is if I double click this, it should open up, yeah. There's my actual file right there. If all of a sudden I decide, you know, I don't want this in black anymore. So I'm gonna go select same and fill color. Um, let's make it red. Why not? Okay. Go ahead and save that. Yep. And you see now in here, my library, it's set that way. Look, it changed it automatically in here as well. Okay. Kind of cool. If I go, change this back, select same fill color, and I make it black again, save that file, come back over here. There it is. You actually saw it live, make that change. Okay. So it's, it's really, it's, it's clever in that regard. It's really nice because it means like company logos might change over time. You have some little color tweaks, things like that. Any files that you have this linked into will automatically, uh, when I change that in my library, it will automatically change it in any file where it's linked in the library. And the reason that I'm kind of stressing linked is here's the other thing that I can do. I'm holding down the alt key right now on a Mac. That would be the option key. And if I drag this in now and then click, now look, 
right? If I click on this one, you see it's a linked file, right? I can see that because it just has that X box around it. If I click on this, it's actual artwork. It's a it's grouped artwork. So I've busted it out of here. This is now live artwork. Um, if I make a change in my actual library at this point, here, we'll just do something. We'll just create a red box right there. I save this. If I go back to my original artwork, you're going to see this adds the red box, but that doesn't because this is not linked anymore. It is no longer connected to that library. All right. And let me undo this before I forget and save that. Yeah, I got to turn that off. Okay. And I can close this at this point and come on now. Oh, you're going to be ornery. If I close the file, open it back up. Sometimes it doesn't uh, affect that change right away. A little bit obnoxious in that, in that case. And yeah, I double click it and now, now it works. All right. Weird, but it is what it is. All right. So I have a banner file in front of me right now. I have my one and a half inch grommet. And one of the things that I can do is I can bring this in and add a grommet mark, right? Um, and because I have a one and a half, this is a one and a half inch hem, right? So that allows me to go in here and, uh, and just set this up and we'll, I don't know, we'll do, uh, I don't know, uh, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do six across. I'll put that last one in place. And then if I select all those grommets, um, if you've never, uh, if you've never done this before, this is kind of nice, uh, window and align, and I can distribute my spacing. I want to make sure that I'm aligned to my selection distribute. And now they're evenly hung all the way across. Um, so there's my grommet marks and um, my, my grommet marks that built into my file. Uh, I have the white and black and that just allows me to just, you know, use my grommet machine and just crank on that rather than have to measure and mark and all of that. It's, it's just built into the file. You know, I could do the same on the bottom. It doesn't really matter. All right, let me show you some other things that you can do with your libraries here. I've shown you that. Um, I can do um, special colors and I, I do have special colors set up here. So if I create this, uh, just a rectangle there, um, I have cut contour ready to go. So if I right click on this, set color, and now it's filled in this case with cut contour, which would be a, a, you know, a contour cut. Uh, I could make it spot one, which is uh, my, my white ink. Uh, PMS 2925 is, um, that's HP blue, but I can also, look, I have a, I have a color palette assigned and I can either come in here and click one of these one by one and it'll set that color or let me, um, if I go to my swatches here, okay, keep note. In fact, let me select all unused and then delete just so you can see what's going to go on here, right? I really have nothing in here but black and white. If I right click this and add theme to swatches, now if I come back over here, I actually have all of those colors added to my swatch list, right? That I can set up very easily. Um, so I do like that, especially when I'm working with, with themed colors. Uh, logos. Right, I can do taglines, video elements. You know, that should look vaguely familiar. Um, it's at the beginning of all my videos, um, and that just allows me to just drag it in. Right, right. I have uh, taglines that I do. One for uh, for sample prints that I that I uh, create. Um, uh, a variety of other ones as well. Right. Uh, and I have my, as I said, I have these kind of grouped into, into subgroups at the moment. 
But let me show you this one as well. This is slick. Um, I can set type, right? I can set up type automatically, um, right? So if I have a disclaimer that I'm always using, right? I can set up that disclaimer. And there is, you know, here's my disclaimer, right? Um, just a, a tongue in cheek thing on the, on the term soon that I use quite often internally. Um, the way this is set up, just so you're aware is however it's set here, right? So this is font, all of my typeface information, and I can change that and it would affect it. But I can also look, I have style set up. I have type styles, so I can actually just click on this um apply oh i need to select the text box apply character style and now it changes that in there right. so this is really nice i can put vector objects in here right this is my graphic elements i can have colors uh logos really in this case are vector objects i can put raster images in here i can put type in here uh, the things that I can't put in here, just so you're aware, are um, anything that's in the appearance palette. So if I go ahead and actually make changes that, that use the appearance palette, um, and the appearance palette will probably be a future, a future video because I, I just I adore this for, for doing some fun things. Um, but anything that you do there, you need to save it as, as an object. I can't, I can't apply a style. Um, and just and just call it back uh, that way. So that's that's one of the things that I can't do. Where can I use this though? This is this is really I mean, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, After Effects, a lot of my mobile apps. Okay, anything that has Window and Libraries in there, um, this is universal. Okay, now the other things that I can do with this, just so you're aware, notice that I have this little icon right here for plus. I can add, right, or invite people to the library. It's gonna open a browser, I believe, um, and, yeah, oh, it's gonna open Creative Cloud Desktop, uh, and I can go in there and actually choose who I want to invite, right, um, and, Notice, by the way, that all of my items are in here as well. So that's just Creative Cloud Desktop, and I can drill down here uh, with my libraries. And you can have multiple libraries, by the way, um, just so you're aware. But so I can share that library with people. That allows you to have common assets among a work group. So if you're working in a group of people, everybody can use identical assets. You don't have to worry about, well, you know, this person uses a different black spec than I do, or, you know, somebody's using, you know, 185C and once somebody's using 185U for a particular red, you don't have to worry about that. Everybody is using the common, common assets. Um, so it's just, it's a, it's a really nice time saver. Um, and it's, it's very nice when you're doing things that are collaborative. Um, so uh, I, I hope you, you learned something from this. I hope you enjoyed what I did. And, and as always, you know, I don't know, like, subscribe, notify, whatever the, the, the YouTube thing is. But at really, as always, thank you for joining me. Um, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.